Hello my crafty friends, it's Beverly here over at Crafting Chaos with the second part in our Halloween series and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the witch's face and as a bonus I'm intending to do another shaped card at the end which will be in the shape of a pumpkin just to give you an alternative from the witch's boot. So let's get started. So we're going to start off by making the witch's face. So we're going to pull on a couple of basic shapes. We need the egg shape and the rectangle. So I'm going to take the egg shape and I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit because I'm going to make it bigger than I need to start with and we'll shrink it down later. So with that oval selected, I'm going to go edit and flip on the horizontal axis. Now I'm going to click on the rectangle and I'm in my properties box, I'm going to reset, re rotate it by 90 degrees as you see and then I'm going to try it at the bottom to see for size and look at where it's overlapping I'm going to drag around both shapes and go to edit and we're going to center them this time on this vertical axis like so and then we're going to go edit process the overlap and weld and that's giving us the witch's face so I'm just going to make that green when I was actually thinking about doing this file, I was thinking about Grotbag's character, which is a famous witch character in the UK that we kind of grew up with, people of my generation, and they'll know who I mean. So now I'm going to go on to the scallop oval to make the hair. Again, I'm going to increase the size a little bit. I'm going to shrink it in. I'm sorry, I'm going to rotate it round by 90 degrees. And I'm going to need... Click on, click off, and I'm just going to close that for a minute so you can see what's happening. Hit D on the keyboard, and then I'm going to overlap them both. Bring the head in place and see what it's looking like. And I think I'm just going to move that down a little bit. I think they need to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to delete one, and I'm going to make it this one bigger. I'm going to duplicate that one bring it in position and I think that's better. Now I'm going to duplicate again for the top part of the hair that I'll make in a minute. So I'm just going to move the head out of the way. I'm going to overlap those two and I'm going to select them both, line them up at the top and then I'm going to edit and weld. That's going to weld the two bits together. So now I'm going to make that orange because I've quite fancied it having orange hair which is again akin to the character grot bags. I'm going to bring the head to the front and put, position it where I think it's going to look okay. Right, so there we are. I can actually now, just if I want to, just resize that in a little bit so that I can get it the size that I want. So that's where we're at now. So this is where I'm at for the witch's hair. I'm now going to get myself a, an, a rectangle and I'm going to make it wider and taller and I'm just going to use that to cut this shape in half so I'm going uh, roughly in half I'm not wanting it necessarily need it to be too exact and I'm just going to select both edit and remove the overlap so I can now delete that and this is going to form the fringe for my witch so again I can always resize it a little so I'm just going to shrink it down that way a little bit and I'm going to try this on my witch's head Okay, so now I'm going to make that orange. So that's where we're at. And it does look a little bit strange at the minute, but once you get the hat on there, it starts to come together. <clears throat> Again, I'm still suffering with this funny throat, so you just have to excuse me um, whilst it's like it is. So we're going to make the hat next. So we're going to find a couple of shapes that we need, and it's this one here, and also this pointed triangle shape there. Now just so that I don't lose the position of those, I'm going to move that out of the way and I think at this stage, just so I've got a bit more room on my mat, I'm going to select everything and group them and I'm just going to resize everything down a little bit so that I've got more room to manoeuvre on my mat. So I'm going to keep them grouped for now just in case I accidentally move them and I'll ungroup them later. So I'm going to take first of all this one, so if we move it across you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to take a duplicate and pop that off to the side. I'm going to make this one a little bit narrower and also wider 
and I'm just going to see, fit it onto the head and see how it's looking. I think it needs to be a little bit wider. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to make the cone part bigger, dragging it out from the side a little bit, but then I want it to be longer but not necessarily wider, so I'm just going to do that part now. So just pulling it down on that one. So then I'm going to look at what it looks like. I'm going to just roughly group the two together so I can put it over, see what it's looking like. And I think that's going to be okay. Might just make that just ever so slightly bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to select both and line them up on the vertical axes and weld. So that's the hat. And I'm going to make that black. So we're just going to do this black and I do the colours on screen just to give me an idea of what my shape is looking like so I know where I'm going. Um, now I'm going to shrink this one right down and I'm going to choose a colour for the brim and just because green is the theme I chose green on mine. You can choose whatever colour you want or leave them just no colour at all because it's not anything that you're cutting out colour, you're just cutting out the shapes and obviously the colour comes from whatever you decide. To cut them from so I'm just going to shrink that down till it fits on the brim of the hat just to give it that dimension I'm going to select both and then I'm going to group them and then I'm just going to rotate them so I can have them at a nice jointy, jointy angle so that I see if I like this, this that size of the hat I'm quite happy with that so that's okay I would group, ungroup all these at the end but that's where we're up to now next we're going to make the witch's mouth now to do that I brought on a circle I duplicated it, I made it into sort of one overlapping the other like so and lined them up on the vertical axes and then I subtracted one from the other to give us this shape and then what I did is I took a rectangle, doesn't matter which one, so we're only using it to cut the shape and I dragged it across my mouth so I sort of was happy with the position, what we'd be left with. And I then drew around both of them to get them both selected and then went edit and remove the overlap. So now we can get that out of the way and this is the shape we're left with. Obviously it's much too big at this stage. We can make it narrower or wider, dependent. And I just made it sort of a dark red colour for the screen purposes and we'll bring it to the top. We'll put it onto the face and we can make the adjustments of how big and small it needs to be. I think it needs to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to make it a little bit narrower and a little less deep. So it looks more like the right size. So I'm happy with that, that's okay for me. Obviously you can play around with this as much as you want and make it the size you want. So now I'm going to bring on <clears throat> this shape here. I don't really know what to call this shape other than it's like a petal. And I'm going to delete that square so it's out of the way. I'm going to edit and flip it on the horizontal axis and scale it down. And this is going to be forming our witch's nose. So I'm going to make this a darker green. And I'm going to put it on the witch's face a little bit big so it needs to be shrunk down there. I want it just about that wide. And that's about as good as I think I want it to be. I can always... Adjust the size, if you want it a bit bigger, you can adjust the size, do whatever you please is, is pleasing to your eyes. Because what's pleasing to mine might be different to what's, what pleases you. So next I'm going to bring on a circle for the eyes and I'm going to scale them right down. And I want them slightly oval shaped rather than just straightforward circles. I could have brought on an oval, but you can do exactly the same thing with a circle. I'm going to make them white so they stand out. I'm just going to free rotate it a little bit and then I'm going to pop it into position and I need it to go back one layer behind the nose so I'm just going to send that back one layer so it's behind the nose. I'm going to duplicate it and because I want the same angle I'm going to edit and flip it on the vertical axis and bring that in and again now I'm just going to duplicate it so I've got something for the black iris in a minute and I'll send that back one layer as well so we get the effect. Okay, so obviously you can play around with this and everyone might, everyone's is going to be slightly different um, if you're using different sizes and so on. So there's the eyes. 
and then I'm going to shrink this one down, make it black and pop that into the white of that eye, duplicate it, edit and flip it on the vertical axis and pop that on that side. So now we've got the two witch's eyes in position. The next thing we're going to make is the witch's tooth and all I did for that was chose a rounded out rectangle. I'll just get this out of the way so I can see it. And it was this one I believe I used. So I bring that one on, I, I shrunk it right down and took it up until it was small enough to fit and decided that she wouldn't have white teeth, they'd be probably quite yellow in colour so I made it a yellowish colour and then I popped that just like the toothy, toothy grin if you will, just adds a little bit of character. Again if you're not happy with this I'm just thinking my eyes might be a little bit too big so I might just group them, group one of them, make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to get rid of that one and then I'll just duplicate that one and edit and flip it on the vertical axis and pop that back into position. I'm happier with that now. Okay, so obviously you can make these differences. The last thing we're going to do is the wart on her nose. So again, I took a circle so I could just ungroup those and just grab one of those black ones, make a duplicate, turn it green from the end of her nose and make it there like so. Then I can duplicate that one and put one down on her chin. And that's about it for that file. Now, that's the witch. So before you would actually then select everything and group them, then you could resize everything up or everything down and make it as big as you want. But remember to ungroup it before you say download it to your USB or you send it across to your scan and cut. So I'll just keep it grouped for now and I'm going to show you how I went on making this pumpkin base card that we were talking about. So you need again, like go on to Pixabay, the, which is the website that I've been showing you, where you can get free images and it's free to make yourself a member. Just excuse me while I take a slurp of my drink. And... <clears throat> Once you've got your account on there, you can search the images. Well, I've put in pumpkin silhouette and clicked enter. And I scrolled down and found this pumpkin, which I thought was a good silhouette. And you click on free download. You can see the um, image type and you can see that it's a free download, free images. And if you click on it, can download it from there. So we're going to download it. It could be any of them. We don't need a particularly high resolution graphic because we're only tracing it. So just download that and that will be downloaded to your machine. But I already have it downloaded so I'm just going to show you the next step. So what we need to do now is trace the file. So we go onto this icon, not this one because we're not dealing with an SVG, we're dealing with an image file. So we need to find the image. So I'm gonna find pumpkin. It will come up in the preview box. I'll knock down the colors because it's only black and white and hit preview. And what we're looking for is a nice turquoise line around the pumpkin as you see. So I'm gonna select that and click okay. Do I want that image? No, I don't. I just want the outline that we've traced. So I'll say no, and that will put the pumpkin on my mat. And I'm gonna, sorry, excuse me, hit my D key twice to make two copies. And I'm gonna bring one of them off to the side. So now I'm going to select both. I'm just gonna see what size they are. They're roughly about five by six and a half, six, five and a half by six and a half at the minute. But we'll see when we've got the finished card. So we're gonna go edit and we're going to align them at the bottom so we know that they're in line with each other and I'm going to scooch that one over and we just want them just overlapping so that we can then select both, edit and weld them. So that's what we've done. So that's the welded pumpkin card together. So this is going to be our top layer from the front and now we need to put our score line here. So I'm going to make it orange 
so it, it looks like a pumpkin, if you will, orange colour. Um, we'll just shut that down for a second and we'll zoom in a little bit. So now, as I've shown you before, when you're using the path tool to make your score lines, if you click on it, you hover over your image with, select the file, hover over and you get a little box, a little box comes up when you hit the center of that and if you hold your shift key down and come to the other side and anchor it that gets it into the middle so then i'm going to turn it into a cutting line and a perforating line and i'm just going to sm select a small perforation because it's only a small hinge i'm going to select both of those and we're going to group them so now i can move the pumpkin independently without moving the actual score line so now i'm going to go view fit to mat Okay, so this is the top of our pumpkin and what I'd like it to do is have some like dimension so it looks more like a pumpkin. So what I did is I brought on an oval shape. So if I just bring on the basic shapes and look for my oval and I believe it was this one that I chose. So we'll bring that on and we'll rotate it by 90 degrees in the properties box and we'll just move that off somehow i've manned it up with two so we'll just remove one of them and then i just made put it in the middle of the pumpkin and just lined it up edit and i lined it up to the bottom and then i just scooted it up so it was just level where that little bit goes up like so and then i stretched it out till it reached the top and i said that then i'm going to just shrink it down on the sides a little bit and then put that in the middle. Okay, so that would be kind of one layer. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. Then if I hit D on my keyboard, put it back into position, and I'm going to stretch this one out to the sides, if you will, like so. And then we've got that sort of a pumpkin effect. So the back one, I could make one colour. So I could make that, say, maybe this colour. I've got them all selected, so I selected them all, and then we could make that one a different colour and then send that back one layer so that I can actually get at the other one. And I'm just going to save again here because it seems to have done that glitch thing again. I'll just save it as another project, then I'm not overwriting anything. Say OK. Now I'm going to just refresh. If this happens and some of your things that you're looking for disappear from your properties box and you can't see them just do that step and it usually solves the issue and as you can see it's back again now so I've got that back there I'm just going to click on that one edit and send it backwards one layer and then I'm going to click on that one on top and make that a different color so now you can see that we've got that kind of a dimensional pumpkin and that would then fit on the top of that one there and that would form your base card now now that we've got that there i'm just going to select everything and we're going to group them and we can see at the moment now that's like a six by 13 so it's not fitting on my mat at the minute so i'm just going to make it five in this direction by about just 10 or so in this direction so i'm going to go down to roughly 10 And I'm going to take this down to five. Okay, so that's going to make roughly now a five by five card. So if I ungroup them now, take off the, bot the, the bottom layer, there's our pieced layer. And you could resize any of these images that I'm going to be showing you how to make to put on your pumpkins. So if I just bring it to the front. Like so, you could fit around the front, you make a nice invitation for a Halloween party or something similar. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you've liked it. If you have, remember to give me a thumbs up and like, share and subscribe. Um, the next part, hopefully, we'll be making the Frankenstein monster and then we'll move on to Count Dracula. But I will also be showing you how to make some... Um, files that could be used as a base card sort of overlay i'll just give you a quick preview now something like taking its sweet time today something like this one i'm just bringing it on so you can have a look 
and that's what the sort of thing I'm saying. So like this bit is separate, if you see, and that's a, an orange piece behind. And I'm going to show you how to make something like that as a backdrop you could use on a card or a scrapbooking, or any of these could be used on scrapbooking pages for your Halloween pictures. All right, so as I've said, please do give me a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. If you want to head over to my blog, it's Beverly at, um, let me just show you where it is and hang on. We'll show you quickly where it is. So if you go onto that and I'll go on to my blog, Crafting Chaos. And you see it's beverly10blogs.com. And where you, where you will find on there, if I give you a quick show and tell, it will show you what files are available, links to how the file's made, and there is where you could go to download the FCM file. Or So once you're in there, you can then select here, and that will take you to a link where you can download the file if you don't want to make it yourself. So that's it for now. Um, thumbs up, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.